Hello duck fans. Another awesome week to be a duck and it's almost Cinco de Mayo so I'm breaking out the Corona and the Manbulance koozie. Thank you to Corey and the rest of the Manbulance crew. Uh, Charles and I hung out with them before the spring game. So anyway, let's get into it. So I'm back in Los Angeles now after being up in Oregon last week for the spring game but we'll get into football in just a minute. Last weekend was championship weekend for the Ducks. What a great time to be a Duck. Oregon became back-to-back -back national champions in acrobatics and tumbling, and then women's lacrosse also captured their first ever MPSF conference title. The lacrosse team is hosting Navy on Saturday afternoon uh, in the play-in game for the NCAA tournament. So students, if you want to go support the team, they will have free pizza. So there's no excuse not to go and cheer on the Ducks. It was a big week for baseball and softball as well. Both sports are now ranked in the top 15. Baseball is in first place in the Pac-12. They swept Gonzaga, and they're currently playing a series down at Arizona. Track, meanwhile, is wrapping up its regular season uh, tonight and this weekend with the Oregon Twilight Meet. It's slash Pac-12 heptathlon decathlon. This is the precursor to the Pac-12 championships, then the national championships, uh, and the track team will be getting quite a boost now that spring football is over in that, uh, you know, that frees up the schedules for some of the football players to participate on the track team. D'Anthony Thomas, Kenyon Barner, uh, Dior Mathis, among others, uh, will be participating in the track team, which could help spur the men's team onto not only the Pac-12 championship, but who knows, maybe even the national championship. While the women seem to be a surefire lock, not only to repeat as Pac-12 champions, but probably end up as outdoor national champions. It's a great time to be a duck. It was a busy week in recruiting, too. The weekend of the spring game always is. Not only Thomas Tyner, already a, an Oregon commit, was at the game, but the Ducks picked up a verbal commit from an in-state talent as well. Offensive tackle Evan Voller from West Lynn. He's a behemoth of a lineman, rated as a four-star prospect on scout. Stack that on top of several new basketball commits for this past week. Alden's team already has four signed letters of intent, and now they have three new hard commits. Fred Richardson, Willie Moore, and a couple weeks ago, Colton Baker also declared his intent to be a duck. That puts the recruiting class at seven for the men's basketball team. Now, we knew... Altman had a lot of gaps to fill, but that's a remarkable haul to bring in that many, especially with the possible prize still yet to be attained. Anthony Bennett, one of the top players in the country, is still strongly considering the Oregon Ducks. Thursday night was also the O Heroes Showtime event. That's where members of Oregon's various athletic programs present live shows to the U of faculty and the public. It's an entertaining time for a good cause. The O Heroes program does lots of great charity work all around the community. And by all accounts, the men's golf team stole the show with their video, which included cameos by Chip Kelly, DeAnthony Thomas, Kenyon Barner in some interesting looking shorts, EJ Singler, along with members of the lacrosse team. It's very funny. It's worth a look. The footage is, the footage is up on YouTube. Go check it out. Now, as for fishduck.com, we're going to have plenty more content breaking down the spring game in detail. Charles and I already did a video together last Monday for the site, but here's also some immediate analysis that Charles and I shot from the stands immediately following the game's conclusion last Saturday. Please, check it out. Hey, Duck fans. Kurt Lipke from fishduck.com and Charles Fisher, Fishduck. Welcome to the Oregon Spring Game post game, where Team Mighty beat Team Fighting 41 14. Nice sunny day, gorgeous atmosphere. Thankfully, the team got out of it with no major injuries. That's always the biggest, most important aspect. But the talk of the day is going to be the quarterback battle. Everyone was talking about it in spring ball leading up to uh, you know, the fact that can't, the prices were closed. We didn't know fully what was going on. And th today is just going to spark months of, deb of debate because Marcus Mariota completely outshined Brian Bennett, who's the presumed starter. So, Charles, your perceptions on Mariota's performance today? Many of us felt that, that Bennett 
pressed too hard trying to make plays, when in fact so many of them came so easily from Mariota. He has a very catchable pass. Is it a cross between a Danny O'Neill or is it more of a Musgrave kind of floater? Yet it's very accurate when he needs to. He can throw it, uh, a rifle as well. I was very impressed with you know, some of the members of the defensive line. Isaiah Remington, Jared Ebert all had good days as well. This was also our first chance to see Eric Armstead, the highly touted five-star. While he didn't get any sacks or major plays, he did manage to have a presence on the line. He really pushed the pocket very well in his limited play on the field. Uh, and he definitely stands out. Not only is it unusual to see a defensive lineman wearing number nine, but his size is very impressive in person seeing him line up. On a team that tries to be very sleek and quick, this is a, a big guy that will probably make a very big presence for years to come on the uh, Oregon defensive line. So Mariota will absolutely be the talk going forward, and now there's going to be speculation. Will it be Bennett? Will it be Mariota? Don't look too much into this. It is just one game, but Mariota absolutely outshines Bennett. He had several touchdown passes. He had a 77 yard touchdown run. However, as we noticed, in a real game experience, that would not have been a touchdown. No, it turns out that Avery Patterson had angle and actually held up. Could have made the tag and didn't, assumed that the official saw it. And it, and it went through nonetheless as a touchdown, but it was very impressive. Mariota appears to have running back speed after all. What was impressive about the run, even though in a real game experience it would not have been a touchdown, was once the Mariota got into the open field, Ifo Ekpreyalomu, track guy, was right behind him and could not catch up to him. That showed that Mariota and Bennett showed good wheels too, not only in straight ahead speed, but being able to cut back and forth. Both quarterbacks looked to be very mobile, and we saw something we haven't seen the last few years. Intentional quarterback draws. The draw play is back in the playbook now, utilizing the quarterback's feet. Good observation because our draw plays in the past have been lame to say the least. We see better blocking now, we see a better opening for the quarterback, and I think now with the additional mobility of both quarterbacks, it's going to be a bigger play in the arsenal. It's going to be interesting also to look very closely at the spring film. It looked to me like we had maybe some triple and even quadruple options going to the same side. We'll get more back on that later on. What was also interesting was that this game was very pass happy. And normally, traditionally, the spring games have been very run heavy. This is the time of the year when the defense is always ahead of the offense. The, the, the offense has to get so into sync. You know, the defense early on and in camp is always going to be ahead, but not today. Even though all the talk this year is that the defense may be the more impressive unit, the offense really shined when Mariota was leading the squad, and there was a whole lot of passing all over the field showcasing both quarterbacks. We do think, though, we're in agreement that uh, the announced attendance is highly inflated. I think we're looking more at 25 to 30,000, but nonetheless, we had a great turnout, a lot of food for Lane County. We're pleased with the result. It was a very nice showing, gorgeous day. They announced 44,000, which would be a new record for spring game. They might have done that just for PR purposes. I'd say 25 to 30 is more realistic, but a fantastic day at Autzen Stadium. I can't wait for September to get here. We have now have months to speculate because this is the only glimpse that we get of the University of Oregon football team until the Arkansas State game. We've got some great videos and analysis coming up over the course of the summer, some new tutorials, and we're going to get into defense and the passing game. I'm Charles Fisher, this is Kurt Lidke, and for fishduck.com. We'll have more content analyzing the spring game very soon, so keep checking back to fishduck.com. The NFL Draft also took place last weekend, and quite a few Ducks now have NFL homes going into next season. Four Ducks were drafted in all, and a few more got free agent deals. So congrats to LaMichael James, Josh Cadu, Mark Asper, David Paulson, Cliff Harris, Darian Weems, Eddie Pleasant, and Lavasse Tuane on your professional pursuits. As for Darren Thomas, uh, stay tuned. We're all certainly hoping he lands somewhere soon. Best of luck to all of them, and of course, once a duck, always a duck. On fishduck.com, our new features are coming very soon. I know we've been teasing those for a while now. You're probably getting sick and tired of hearing about it, but things are being implemented slowly, but we've got some really cool stuff in the works that we think you're just gonna love. For content this past week, we had some great articles. My personal favorite was David Mello's interview with Keith Lewis on Thursday. Be sure to check that out along with uh, the most recent Fish Duck Minute video from Tuesday and of course all of our other fantastic articles. Our writers are doing just a terrific job. I'm so proud of them. 
I should also mention that we've added a PayPal button to our site. Now, look, nobody likes asking for money, but the reality is that fishduck.com is entirely self-funded by its founders. That's me and Fishduck. The expenses have been intense, including the purchase of HD cameras and editing equipment along with servers and everything else to operate the site. We will be modifying the site soon to permit for a, a little advertising, but nothing overly annoying, but we need your help too. So if you like fishduck.com, if you've learned something or you've enjoyed our content, please you know, consider donating a little to the cause via the PayPal button on the front page. And if you're interested in advertising on Fish Duck or becoming a major sponsor, we have further information available as well. Thank you. Thank you to all of the former players, the fans, and everyone else that I ran into last week in Oregon. It was a blast getting to speak with so many former UO athletes like Brian Hannibal, John Tama Payao, David Massey, Darian Weems. And congratulations, Darian, on being signed to an NFL contract, big man. Uh, Jeff Branson, Doug Douglas, Keith Lewis, and, and many more. We had a fishduck.com staff barbecue after the spring game on Saturday, which happened to feature Oregon legend Kristen McLemore burning fishduck contributor Jared Sawyer on a deep route in Charles's backyard. Check it out. Sunday, I was at the video shoot for this summer's next Duck music video hit track, so look for me in that coming around probably July-ish when it's released to the public. It's a banging track full of Duck love from Exile once again. So during the shoot, uh, some something interesting happened. Uh, Oregon wide receiver BJ Kelly showed up, and he played football with some kids outside Autzen while we were waiting for the camera crews to show up. So. It was nice to see a current player giving kids a memory that certainly they'll carry with them for a long time. Especially the especially the pick six that he threw to a little girl that everyone gave him so much crap about afterwards. And he was saying, don't tell Chip Kelly that. He, he's a good guy, though. I'm very glad that BJ Kelly is a duck. And now, my random tweet of the week. Hey, will you shut up? Thank you. Now normally each week this is where I give a music recommendation, but instead it just doesn't feel right this week because we lost someone very special. One of the most innovative, eclectic groups over the past three decades unquestionably was the Beastie Boys. They started as a hardcore New York punk band, then they created a heavy metal hip hop blend in the 80s that influenced everyone thereafter. Uh, they changed time and again their personas, proving that they were far more than just crazy party guys, but true musicians and absolute geniuses. On Friday, today, Adam Yauk, better known as MCA, one of the founding members of the Beastie Boys, lost his lengthy battle with cancer. Uh, the Beastie Boys changed the direction of popular music several times. Their influence is almost beyond measure on art and culture, and the word legend is a gross understatement to describe them. Uh, MCA will be dearly missed. So instead of me telling you about some new artist, please go, you know, dust off those old Beastie Boys records and you know, re relive some of the magic that these guys created. Paul's Boutique, or Check Your Head, or Licensed Ill, Ill Communication. So many hit songs, and you know they're really the first ones who bridged the gap between the rock culture and the hip hop culture, making it acceptable for anyone to be able to listen to hip hop and participate in that. Now you look at the influence that hip hop has had around the world, and we really owe a tip of the cap to the Beastie Boys for establishing that. Um, Yauk was also very active in political and social movements, in particular the Free Tibet movement, and he did extensive charity work. So he was 47, you'll be dearly missed. So long MCA, and thank you for all the music.